Hey everybody, welcome back to what'll be episode 23 of Iron Sword. I guess I'm not welcoming you back to that episode, I'm welcoming you to the episode, but welcome back to the stream. And, uh, yeah, I, I have personally, like, started off this session before I even went live with, like, a weak hit, I want to say. I was, I was trying to make my fan go faster because it's way too hot here today. <laughs> and while I was successful, I got the fan to go faster. I found the right cord and I pulled it. I did also manage to knock free the dome covering the light underneath. It fell to the ground and broke into a bunch of glass that I was just cleaning up. You can actually see the hose of my shop vac back there as so I was just quickly trying to vacuum up glass and get ready. And then the big piece is there behind my head. Ooh, I was actually like very perfectly blocking them before. It's just like, and the big pieces. So yeah, starting off with a bit of a weak hit over here. I had success with a with an unfortunate complication. Thank you. Blink, I hope I hope your day is off to a better start. How's it been? It's been good. It's warm here, though not as warm as over there I hear, but <laughs> it's I got my AC cranking. That's the important bit. No wonder it looks so blue over there. You've got the, the frigid coldness, whereas over here I've got all of this warm color temperature. I know, it's looking quite quite warm over there. Yeah. Deserty. <laughs> Anyhow, um, to kind of go back over where we left off in this game, you may, the, the, some very significant events happened last time that we kind of mm -hmm. spent the entire session focusing on. Importantly, I have a flesh and blood character again. Flint is back. Yes! In a, in a new body, but Grey was successful, uh, completely successful at bringing me back. Though, uh, we got to find out that indeed this was going to be a full-on swap, and uh, Naya is now in that, in that glass bottle as a mode of light, and wound up flying that back to the elves to just kind of uh, have them do something with it. We, we used my raven to do that. Neat. And... Um, Learned some cool things about the kind of grove that we were in. That we learned that it was this weird place that kind of showed you what it thought you needed. Like based on based on you and who you are at that point in life. Like it would, like it. We got the impression that it was this amazing mystical grove because you needed it to be one for this ritual, and that who knows what its like natural form actually is. But they also, like, it, it gives you things uh, based on what it thinks you need, but they only last as long as you're in that area, as we learned when we tried to leave, and the things Flint brought back <clears throat> from the other side weren't really real. And they disappeared in his hands. Um, That's right. But kind of the... Oh. What's up? Um, you know, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> The, the big thing that kind of came up before the end, though, that I think is going to really inform the direction we're taking today is uh, when we were figuring out what Flint had to promise Death in order to get this chance back. Like he owed Death uh, a favor, which was a life that he was... It turns out Flint was unwilling to take. And once he made this commitment that he was not going to accept the deal, he's now on a very ticking clock. If he does not do the deal in what we determined to be less than a month's time, like a handful of weeks, uh, he's going to be dead forever. and there, there will be no more second chances. So, we determined that a course forward would be we got to find out something else that can appease death. Like, what, what can we exchange? We need a bargain, and we got to do it fast. So we're trying to weasel our way out of the specific terms of a deal with death, and that is going to be no easy feat. Um, now, as a result of that... We did earn some experience last time, enough to buy a new asset, and I bought one for Flint that I think would be very representative of this whole part of the story. I took the Oathbreaker path, as you can see down there. Um, yeah. So it is designed for, you know, once, once you forsake your vow. Now what this is going to do is it's going to count as an ability, which I need to add to my sheet. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I, it's gonna be as if I'm wounded. Like, being an Oathbreaker just hurts your soul. Um, but, once I swear, when I swear an Iron Vow to redeem myself, which I think is basically the one we already swore last time, the I will find a way to appease death with a new deal. Like, that, that is the vow. Um, it has to be extreme or greater, which it is. It is an extreme vow. 
Give that vow a special mark. Just, I would, but we know that's the one, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, when you reach a milestone on the marked vow, take plus two momentum. So every time we reach milestones on this, um, it's going to be a momentum farm, which will help kind of push forward and get through this extreme vow a little bit. But my max momentum is a little bit lower because I've got that ability. There's a couple of other upgrades I can add to it. One in particular I want to do before I fulfill the vow is that bottom one, um, which is when you fulfill your vow on your marked quest and score a hit, you find redemption and automatically activate this ability at no cost. You may then improve one of your stats by plus one and discard this asset. So this is kind of like a temporary asset for as long as I'm finding this redemption path. I can use it to try and uh, get success and get out of this deal with death. And when I finally am successful at that, I'll be able to make one of these stats one higher and then get rid of it. No longer have the ability. So uh, looking forward to exploring that a little bit. And while we're on yeah. the subject of assets, uh, Gray, of course, also has some experience points from last time and might as well spend them on something, if possible. And I have... Yeah, I didn't look into it. <laughs> it's okay, because I, I have a suggestion for you. I was, when I was looking through for ones okay. for Flint to take, I saw one that stood out and I was like, hey, that might be pretty cool for Gray. So I don't, I don't have it on screen yet, but let me let me put it on screen just so we can fully see what I'm talking about here. Um, I can't remember what it's called at the moment. The image. I'm just gonna... Invoke, that's right. So here we go. Here's this asset that I, that I saw that I think could be pretty cool for Gray. Uh, now, because we've been exploring a little bit more about like all these various magical effects that you can do with your hands, um, mm. this might allow us to do that in a little bit more of a nice mechanical way, like have, so, have some more rules to help with that. And I think it would work really well with um, the fact that we're getting closer and closer to these obelisks that are putting, pumping out all these weird magical energies into the air. So what Invoke does is uh, when you consume the mystical essence of your surroundings, Roll plus wits. On a strong hit, add the value of your action die to the essence track. So you'll have this little essence track down here. And uh, it'll it'll add to it. Um, mm -hmm. You may then secure an advantage or face danger and use this. Like, basically, you'll be able to make a roll spending this. Like, say you had the, a fully filled track and it was plus six. You could... Uh, you could use the plus six as opposed to a stat to create minor mystical effects or illusions. If you do so, you then, your essence goes down by one and you take plus one momentum on a hit. Uh, that's, that's what happens if you get a strong hit. On a weak hit, you do it, but, um, but it costs you stress. Like it's, it's a really harrowing experience. Now the one thing, oh, never mind. right? Wits you're really good at. So you'd, you'd be more likely to get strong hits on this anyway. Um, so that's like the first ability it can have. You can also upgrade to do things like you may compel with essence, um, even though you, you're going to be really good at, at uh, compelling anyway. Um, but basically, like, you kind of do it through a show of power. It's like when, when Gandalf does the, like, Bilbo Baggins! And, like, looks all enormous and all that. Like, I think that's kind of what's going on there. Is you're using magic and, like, minor illusions to help make you all the more compelling. Um, yeah, I like that, which is something I tried to do in earlier episodes, but yeah. it didn't work. So, so that's not one you would start with, but you could at least, but you could upgrade to it later. Um, okay. And then the third thing you could upgrade to is, well, the last thing that you could, you could do it in any order you want, but when you perform this ritual, add plus one and take plus one essence on the head. So there's just another thing that just makes you better at it. So I feel like it would be an interesting way to kind of represent, um, you know, being in a more magical land is now making you a little bit more tapped into how to use these hands. And I feel like it, it could be pretty cool to give you some ability yeah, to like, like that. more regularly make some, you know, minor effects and illusions. Yeah. Yeah, I'd uh, love to implement that actually. Okay. So yeah, if you, if you want to buy that, it's a guy here. It's, it's called invoke. Um, so the one you start with is that first one where I'm pretty sure we're going to start you off at, like just the zero track and you'll have to gain that essence by indeed consuming the mystical essence of your surroundings. So the one thing that I want to figure out between the two of us before we get started is like, 
what exactly does that mean? How do you how do you think you consume essence? Do you is that like a literal eating thing? Like there's a thing in the environment that you literally consume, or is there some other way that you take in kind of like the mana of the environment? Like what is what do you think that looks like for Gray? Um, how I envision it is that since we're getting closer to the obelisks, I think that their power is kind of we're we're feel, feeling that power more and we're seeing it more in our surroundings and our environment. Yeah, I think that's where Gray would kind of absorb that. Sure, as, but as, is there like a is there any particular action oh, you do or thing. yeah, like is there like something you do or something that might so that we can know like oh you did that thing so let's let's see if you get any um any more essence out of it like may. Is it like a just a, a ritual you do, or like a, like like a meditation, or like what what is a specific thing that we can know oh, yeah. you definitely you triggered this thing? Maybe um, so. This is upon arrival of a new place every single time. Oh, this is uh, whenever just whenever you consume the mystical essence of your surroundings. Like whenever whenever you do okay. this thing, we'll be able to um, see if you get more. Um, essence out of it. There's just always the risk that okay. it might be it might be stressful if you don't get a strong hit, <clears throat> and it might just not work if you miss. Okay, I probably just like close my eyes and activate my hands a little bit. Maybe they start glowing, and it kind of um, brings in anything. It brings in the magic of any anything the obelisks are affecting. Cool. So yeah. maybe, maybe something like that. Yeah. So just like like a short form kind of ritual thing where you. Um, yeah, it's like a meditative. Yeah. Just a few moments of meditative. Stage. But like definitely something you'd have to have like some peace for. Like you couldn't. Like this would would be hard to do in just like the yeah. middle of battle or something. You'd have to <laughs> yeah, already <definitely>. be ready. <laughs> okay. So it'd be more likely something you'd do like while we're camping or, or mm. taking a rest on the road or something like that. You might have a moment to do it. Okay, cool. Well, let's put this asset over with the others. Running out of room where to put stuff, but I'm going to, for now, let's see. I'm gonna, what's up? I can't, I can't copy and paste this image that I made. <laughs> I made. Um... Oh, did, did you indeed draw Naya? Well, I started to, and then I realized that my drawing skills are really rusty. So I was like, all right, but I still want to conceptualize this, this image I have of Naya. Yeah. And so I think I came up with something that would satiate everyone's um, imagery a little bit. Okay. Like what Naya might look like, but I can't post it. Oh, no. Frustrated. What's up? I'm like, what's hitting, stopping you? I'm hitting copy. I'm going into my files and I'm hitting copy. And usually that I could just copy and paste right into chat. But it's not letting me for some strange reason. I mean, you'll. So I guess I'll just. I'll just I mean, you'll need a. Forward. As I say, you'll, you'll need a link or something. Um, yeah, that, that isn't always the case. So that's, really? It's weird. I've never sometimes done it that it works way. And sometimes it doesn't work. Um, I've never known you can do that. I'll just put it in the. Discord and we can yeah, go for it. I'm, I'm still adjusting and making room for these assets and stuff. Um, so I've got... I've truncated your horse asset a little bit more. Um, we're just going to have to know that thing that says Mighty and has a track, that, that is Thornberry. I'm trying... I've been... Okay. Since you have so many assets now and I've been running out of room of where to put them, I've just been showing only the parts that are strictly necessary. Um, yeah, that's fine. The problem with this is I've, I need both the top and the bottom because, like, I need... The track is on the bottom. Um, okay. Uh, though you know what, we might just have to. We'll just keep. Tr we'll just have to keep track of of the track, and just know somewhere how much essence you have. I guess. Um, or maybe I guess I have a little bit of room here. I could hold on. I got this. All right. I need to, I'm going to duplicate this. Yeah, I would, in theory, sorry, Chad, in theory, I would have done this in advance, but this was a thing I was thinking of asset-wise, like, really right before the, right before the stream. Just did not have time. Okay, so we'll have, uh, 
There you go. There'll be this track over. Meow. And this over. Meow. Now we just need to make sure you don't ever get any more assets because I've got like no room anymore. Also, as soon as you upgrade an asset, it's going to be the same problem. So I'm, I'm going to have to rethink this at some point and find a way to better represent them. But for now, we have just exactly enough room for this. Right, so this is asset invoke. Put that in there. This is your invoke track. Now we just need to get a little bit of a... Just need a marker on there to show that you have zero essence at the moment. So let's add one more image, another one of those little rings like we have on your horse. Iron circle, make that way less big. <laughs> okay. I believe we are good to go. Alright. So I posted an image of what I think Naya should look like. <laughs> oh god. All right, hold on. The only difference, okay. I this could is, not find y'all can what I'm looking for anywhere. So this is what I came up with. It showed up briefly in her window. But let me show you uh, the. Oh, it actually. That's right. I don't have. I don't have a quick way to just show my monitor on this setup. But here um, you. You can take a as you see. We have a uh, Legolas <laughs> with uh, with sugar glider kind of wings. Uh, that's that's Naya, as you see over there. That's the picture she posted. Yep. So just imagine that, and I don't know why, but I just imagine Naya is blonde for some reason. Maybe maybe because of Legolas. I don't know. But um, but maybe less fuzzy in the body area, more human-like in the body area. <laughs> but definitely those flaps. Gotcha. But of course, you know, all of that is, is actual body, since they don't wear clothes. Like, it's it's not a onesie with that, that's all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Got it. Though, granted, Naya's going to wear clothes soon. Right now, they're still or right now it's Flint again, so Flint is wearing that horse blanket around the body, but, um... True. Anyhow, now we've spent a good 15 minutes on, on all this prep stuff, let's dive into actually getting into the world in the game. So... Okay. We have quite the ticking clock on this whole beating death to the punch. And mm -hmm. that is... Flint certainly believes that should that should be the main focus right now. It's, it's certainly his focus. Like, uh... So we... I, you know, last time we left off on Flint kind of, like, weeping in the snow because of the, lo the objects disappearing and it... One of those objects, to his mind, being the container for his son, Aiden. <clears throat> um, but I think uh, we've, we've had a moment. He's kind of recovering a little bit from it, from the initial um, shock of it all. And is now just very inward and, uh, like, has that kind of, like, haunted look on his face of, not really sure exactly what to do just yet and eventually turns to you and just says how are we gonna get out of this gray how how am i gonna get out of this it's not even your problem i wish i had the answers i'm as clueless as you are but we need to figure out why these objects disappeared or do, do you even need those i mean this is i i need the lantern the lantern held my son i know it to be true i found it in the dreamlands and i need it back it's my only chance to find him i know he's okay. in that light but I can't even focus on that yet. I... Have... 
if I believed that I could find him, find his lantern and get him back in time, then his life would be a happy trade for mine. I would happily spend my last days getting him back. But I don't think there's time. I think that death is going to take me back before I could possibly locate him and pull him back into this world. We need to find something else that death wants. But I... I don't have the first idea what that is. I... Would you feel better if we went back in the forest? I, I want to know if these objects will come back. That might help. I... On the one hand... On the one hand, I am del My heart pounds over the idea that the... That the lantern could come back and that I could... I could have it again. And know that it's... It's still out there. But the other part of me is terrified to find out that I've... That that opportunity is gone. And if it... If it doesn't, I... I just don't know what I'll do. Um, I, I kind of take Flint by the arm and I, I'm like, come on, let's, let's go back, let's go back to the oasis. Let's see, let's see if these come back. Yeah. Let's do we'll it. We'll figure something out. All right, so we, t we go into the oasis and... First things first, I don't think it would look the same anymore because you no longer need a, a spot to do a ritual. Yeah. So, like, changed. I imagine that at least the inside of it looks completely different, which is a completely separate question than whether or not the items come back. But mm -hmm. I don't think it looks the same. Um, now, granted, what we need, oh what Flint needs so badly right now is to know what death wants so i wonder if it's informed by yeah, that at all i i was thinking like what if it's what if death like is there world like what, what we it's talked about like before creepy and cemetery like what we talked before about um like what it looked like from flint's perspective when they when he conversed with death last time um which was that kind of stranger things-esque darkness with uh just like a coating of, oh, of water on the floor like what if we walked in and like as once we cross the line, like, that's just where we are in this, like, seemingly infinite void of blackness. And, like, and death is there. That'd be terrifying. Yeah. But I think it would be such a cool way to start this if, like, we can literally speak with a, um, like, like, it... It wouldn't be literally death, but it would be like a like an avatar of him, basically, um, just in this world, who could speak on his behalf, and like we might be able to get information that way about what alternatives there are. Okay. Um, since I don't, I don't get the idea this would be like a secret mission. Like I think Death already knows that like this is like a, that I'm breaking the vow, and that really I've I've already broken it. I just still have however many weeks there are to uh, to make things right. So and we talked about that last time. How it's actually it's it's the iron that's kind of keeping me protected like that. the The fact that I'm iron sworn gives a little bit of a mystical protection from allowing him to pull me back already. As soon as the bow is broken, so yeah, we we walk into this grove. Or something that... A place that was once a grove. And, like, you know, we were side by side as you were helping me in. Like, a, you said you are like, taking me by the arm? or Yeah, I'm leading you back in by your arm. Just kind of gently. And then, yes, yeah, as, as soon as we cross the boundary... Uh, like, I don't think it's a literally instantaneous thing. But, like, it's like the world very quickly fades out. And then... Yeah, it's like tropically and then all of a sudden then just... just But then, and then as soon as, like, we're, we turn around and look even from where we came from, it, it looks like there's an infinite blackness behind us as well. Like, it seems like there's no end to it. Um, 
and then yeah, standing, standing before us, is the very avatar of death. And we should figure out like what is. We never really described last time what death looks like. Um, I always envisioned the Grim Reaper, but I know that might not be the case here. If it's an avatar or like something that's speaking on its behalf. I mean, it's certainly we certainly could go classic style like that. I mean, there's. It's always a, you know, it's a, it's a harrowing and striking image to have, you know, the, the faceless cloaked person with the, you know, the, the hourglass hanging from the belt and all of that. Um, I imagine whatever it is, it's, it's, it's scary. And yeah. he's going to be hiding behind Flint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think even this avatar is probably enough that we should both have to endure a point of stress. Like, just because it's... It is a very striking image and just utterly harrowing. So let's see how we both... Ooh. What's up? Does, does the lantern and key come back too? Like, are they oh, that... in your hands again? Good question. Um, I think we determined that the object does come back. Uh, well, at the very least, we figured out that it, like, it could. Like, it's... Um, it would just, it would give us what we need, but oh, it wasn't so reliable. Back. Like, we might not need that right now. Right. Okay, um, that makes sense. But we can find out. Let's ask the Oracle. And then let's yeah. then after we figure that out, uh let's take a point of stress and then see how we take it. Um Alright, so as for the Oracle. Alright, so the question is, does the key and lantern come back? And I think it's like, I think it's probably just, you know, a 50-50 shot. Like, maybe maybe this weird thing determines that that's still, like, enough of what Flint needs in his life that it appears. But maybe not. So let's see. Does the, do the key and lantern come back? They do not. Um, so apparently, well, that is not to say that they won't ever come back. But at least in this moment, yeah. they, they are not significant enough to make an appearance in this grove again. And, like... I think for the moment, Flint is too struck by by the Avatar of Death to even notice that they're not here, because um, that's just got way more of his attention. But let's uh, let's endure that stress. Welcome, Beanie. All right, so endure stress. Right now, you've got three spirits, but um, but four hearts. So we're gonna roll with your heart. Find out how well do you take this? We hit. Oh man, yeah. The challenge die. Challenge die is indeed a ten. It, it is hard to endure against uh, against death. Now on a weak hit, just nothing happens. Like we we take the point of stress and then move on. No, I want to. I want to know what death looks like. What are we, totally. What are we I I mean I'm fine uh, with going with that classic image. Like I don't I don't know if we need to uh, make it specific to this world just because. Like I I think it's it's certainly a version of death that still fits in this world. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know if he's, I wouldn't see, like, holding the sickle. Um, I think that part's less important, but definitely that, the, like, hourglass on, like, a rope belt um, that's, like, mm -hmm. ever ticking away at some sand, or that there's ever sand falling away at it. Um, I think we still got the, like, you know, skeletal hands that would, uh, that stick out from beyond the robe. Um, and just, you know, the hollow nothingness inside the the hood uh i i don't see any need to to stray from the classic Ray is just terrified She's, she feels the just coldness shaking. she feels the grip yeah i think it's definitely really like, like just utterly and... cold in here and yeah I, I like that idea of like there being like a literal feeling of a grip on you like like you can even though death is all the way over there, you can just, like, feel this grip on, like, your inside. Like, something is being squozen. Um, yeah. And it, like, like it's we're on the verge of death. Yeah, it's, like, it's harder to breathe. Um, your heart is, like, slowing. And, like, it, every... Or it, if it's not slowing, it, at least it feels like every beat has to go through, like, this thickness. Like, it's just hard to beat. Um, mm. It's just hard to exhibit signs of life here. Uh, in it, in its presence, they still happen, but they just feel like they take so much more effort. Um, mm. So anyway, that's that's how Greth took Greth uh, Gray took it. 
Uh, Greth is one gray and uh, because ships with with death. That's our that's our celebrity couple name. <laughs> and okay, how does how does Big Papa Flint take this stress? As we move over to that real quick, so he's got three heart and oh right. Uh, since you brought him back to life, can we agree that maybe it's fair to reset these, like, health, spirit, and supply? Or not supply, because we share that, but health and spirit should probably just go back up to, like, the default. Like, it's it's basically yeah, like a... So. Like, he's got a, he's a new being. Uh, yeah. I don't think he should come back on the verge of death again. We just never <laughs> reset those. I like, we went through a huge fucking ritual to get him back. Yeah, I think he's got full health that yeah. whatever Naya had. Yeah, because Naya had full health. Spirit is the one that I would accept a little bit more. Like, maybe not full spirit. He still had a brush with death. Like, I don't know. I'll start him at... You were at three. That seems like a fair place. It's roughly in the middle. Just be like, could, could be doing better. Um, so he takes the one more. And let's see how he takes it. So this will be a heart roll. Door stress with heart. Okay, a couple of weak hits on this. And both times, there's a 10 on one of the challenge dice. Death death is always just exerting that much influence uh, to make sure that there is one die that you cannot overcome. You will not do better than 10. Um, so yeah, we both take it, we both go down to two spirit as we're just like, our, our knees are knocking, our, cheeth, our teeth are chattering, our teeth are tattering. And, um, <laughs> and like, it's, it's, I think it's like the wind has been knocked out of us. Like, it's hard to speak for a moment as, as yeah. death just like, I think death, death had been like turned around with like its back face towards us, but then like creaks its neck around to, to see us. And it's like at that moment where, when like, the the blank face meets ours that this happens and like the shock hits us um can't even look at death without <laughs> yeah feeling like we're gonna die well because it's like an existential crisis just looking at him yeah. like you are being confronted very literally with the fact that we are all going to die and in mm -hmm. a in a undeniable very present in the moment kind of sense um and then it like turns the rest of the way around now, if we're going with all sorts of other classics with death, like, so often death doesn't say anything. It just, like, silently communicates. Um, do you... Maybe we should roll an oracle for that to find out, like, does death talk? And chat, I if you... I think he does talk. Does? But... I was figuring we could just oracle this to find out. Uh, chat, if you have any thoughts on this, feel free to shout them out. But as for asking the oracle if death talks... Right now, I just put that as like a 50-50, unless anybody has any kind of leanings otherwise, that should be more or less likely than that. Now, granted, this is also the avatar of death, so in theory, a, a figure made to communicate on its behalf. Um, but let's see. Does the avatar speak? Yes! Okay. Um, so this avatar is capable of speech, and... Let's just see what we can it's do. It's just like a whispery voice. Yeah. Hey, if you wanna if you wanna take on the role of death for us, go for it. Oh, oh. If you wanna give it its whispery, like grave dirt kind of voice. It's like you flint. And I like the last name is. Uh, Ingram, but Flint is good enough. Ingram. Um, yeah. And like <laughs> oh man, I imagine like there's probably a secondary series of like shocks through the body that happen like if death speaks your name, like oh man, that's oh, yeah. that's like somebody <laughs> walking across your grave. Um yeah. like uh honestly, I th I I'm going to suffer harm on that. I think it literally hurts my body cuz it's like one step closer to death. Um Oh shit, yeah. Just the one point, I think Death was, you know, just trying to make a point out of it, but, like, 
I like the idea that death speaking your name will literally harm you. Like, that's that's how powerful... Because we're, we're dealing yeah, with a fucking god sense. here. <laughs> Plus, I, he's probably pissed at you, too. Completely. <laughs> so, yeah. Wants to, like, stick that knife in real quick. So, I'm going to take a... I'm going to take a point of harm. And, uh... And then I'll roll with... Roll with my health remaining to see how well I take it. Okay. We hit again. Uh, so, indeed, it just continues. No nothing more happens. But that first thing happened, like, uh, Death says that, and Flint, like, doubles over really quickly and is, like, shaking more violently for a moment uh, before it subsides as those words just kind of, like, reverberate inside him. Like, not in a way that they, they don't, like, reverberate to you, but, like, for him, it's like they're bouncing around inside his body and, like, damaging his very organs as as it does that. Um, and I, I look over at you concerned, but I'm just frozen. Yeah. I can't really do anything else. <clears throat> I'm frozen with fear. And... The effects of being new. I've come back. I've, I've come to strike a new deal. Surely there, surely there must be something else. Something else I can do. Something else I want. Um, and I, I would like to try and compel death to, um, to give another answer, like the to give some give another deal. Yeah. Um Maybe. So this is gonna be a compel to lead into a gather information. So it's our classic like compelling some compelling somebody to tell us something. And so like he's like adding in like like tears going down his face again, just like the, I wanna make it right. But I can't do that. I need something else. Please. I beg you. And so this heart roll. We get another weak hit on it. Uh, it's just every single roll has been a weak hit today. Yeah. But well, I forgot to open up my move reference before I started, but now I've got it. So compel on a weak hit. This is one I forget. It's uh right. As a so I will I will get plus one momentum. Uh and I will get to make gather information with a plus one, but uh it's they ask something in return. So there is something, you know, much smaller than on the scale of kill somebody, but like there's something that death needs and, and it's probably just more like it's probably just like a blood sacrifice type of thing like um i i think that okay so here's what i imagine death saying um by iron you are protected and so by iron you must be armed and so i think what what death wants like it like gestures towards your sword because like you you carry the iron. Um, death needs needs me to be harmed by that iron before it'll say anything. Um, as another gesture of like paying the price towards its domain and uh, and being hurt by the very thing that's keeping me protected right now. Um, and. I think death gestures to you because like you were also the one who brought me back and like forced this this deal with death so yeah, death partly responsible. death requires you to basically like like slash me with the sword like to inflict harm on me um and like I think it's clear to both of us what what's necessary and Flint just looks at you and just says just do it it's like he's like closing his eyes that well I guess they're they're blind anyway but the eyes are just squinched shut and just goes just do it gray it's, it's okay it's I, better than what I've got coming I look at 
flint and I look at my sword and I, I lift it up and I'm looking at flint again I'm like what and then I look over at death just like what what do, and it's just what like I do? it's just like the hollow cloak just looking straight at you and just un unwavering unmoving it does it's I think part of what's so unnerving about it is like it doesn't have any of the tiny motions of like a figure that's breathing or has a heart pumping or anything like that. It's just every placement of it is just perfectly still. And like, no matter how subtle that is, it's just always really unnerving to look at. Yeah. And so it's just eyelessly staring at you and just waiting. You, you want me to hurt him? Yeah, it's still it's motionless. Like it, death has said what it's gonna say. But uh, on a player level, yes, um, needs you to slash him with the sword. I don't know where to slash him. <laughs> when, where? Um, he'll like he'll turn around and pull up. A, um, I guess he's only wearing the horse blanket right now, so he'll just, like, drop the horse blanket, and he's just in this... He's just utterly cold and naked again, um, as Naya, and... Or in Naya's body, rather. And just, like, turns and uh, bends over his back a little bit to just expose just a, a bare back to you. And it's al um. almost like you're... It's almost like you're about to whip him or something. I kind of rev up and just half shut my eyes, half ass swing. I don't, I don't really want to hurt Flynn. Yeah, well, like I, but... and I think it can be, you know, it it can be just on the surface level. Uh, like it doesn't have to be like this deep maiming cut, but, um, and thankfully, I think you have the control with your sword to to be able to do that. Um, to make it, you know. Okay, so I don't slash very hard, obviously, and I do have some skills, so I yeah give him a good slash across. Okay, uh, which I think is going to do the like side of his back, maybe not directly across. That would be weird. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, uh, because this is with a, a deadly weapon, I think it's it's reasonable not to do this the way you would ordinarily do it if you were like fighting somebody. Like it, it's going to do the two. It's gonna do two amount, two points of health, um, and then I'll try and endure that, and then, but then, death is willing to. Uh, we'll, we'll get some information. So this drops Just down. Say sorry, Flint. I know. I can't argue with death. Ah! Just immediately try to help them back up. I think the sorry. the. The blood drops into the, uh, that, like, slick, reflective floor, and then, like, immediately all of, all of the blood that trickled out ha is, like, snaking over into, like, where Death is standing, and it just, like, gets sucked up. Um, like, it just moves over on its own, um, rather than just, like, dispersing into the water. Drink that up for breakfast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so let me do another Endure Harm real quick. Or, uh, yeah. And then we'll do a Gather Information to find out what is another possibility we could do for death. And I think once we know this, this will be the first milestone on the way to making it right. Like, knowing what we can do is, is, a, is a milestone. Um, where is the thing? There we go. I, I, keep, I keep trying to find the where the suffer moves are, and for some reason I keep losing them. Um... It's a shame, because we're doing a lot of suffering today. Um, Alright, this is, uh, is going to be with iron. Actually, iron or health, they're both the same amount now. And another weak hit. Every single roll has been a weak hit today. Uh, which, again, is fine. It just means nothing more happens. Uh, okay. they're like A strong hit would be a chance to kind of like get something more out of it. And, like, maybe even get the, the health back, or at least one point of it back. But in this case, it's weak, so it's, nothing happens. 
Now, I didn't yet give myself the momentum that I got from Compel. Uh, so I've got that now. And now we just need to do a gather information to find out, like, how complicated is this answer when we get it? As I recall, hey, digging. As I recall, we've got a, I've got a plus one on this. I I don't have great wits though. Um, is there a way? Is there is there something Gray could do potentially to kind of like aid the role for like secure an advantage, like some way to aid to aid me in this. Um, Yeah, I, I, like some I way to help. I can't think of anything offhand, really. Anything you could do that would like. What? Like, what? What's up? That... She helps him back up, if that's what you mean. Oh no, I meant in like uh, in this gather information, like. Oh. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything offhand, really. Um, I'd love Gray to be doing the role, but it doesn't make as much sense to me. Like I. Um. I think this has got to be using Flint's wits. Actually, no, I I don't know if I agree with that because like, I think this role is really representative of like um, like working together to like make sure that we then she, ask additional questions and like make sure to like gotten, clarify things. Yeah, and she might have gathered up some cur courage after hurting her friend. Like, yeah, geez. it's kind of snapped you out of it a bit. Plus, I think what's important is, like, you know, death is going to be all cryptic and stuff, but we have your smarts to help make sense of what's said. Um, like, you're still here listening to it, so I I think it... I've sold myself on being able to use your wits instead of mine, because your wits are three instead of one, which is a big difference. Um, so we're going to use your wits, we're going to give you the plus one, and we're going to find out what we can find out here. There it is. Gather information. There it is. Adventure moves. We're going to use Gray's wits. I'm going to give you a plus one. And let's see if we can finally break out of this weak hit uh, pool. Uh, in the good way. Let's not break into it into like the miss or complication way. Nope. Another weak hit. You rolled as best as possible. But unfortunately, death is continuing to get really high challenge dice rolls. Um, Shit. It's hard to... So we got a weak hit. So we, we're, we're still riding that train, which, you know, probably for the best, because it means that, indeed, like, this is not going to be easy. It's going to be some complicated thing. But how did she use her wits? Like, what did she do? Um, so it's... This is representative, like, asking questions and, like, conducting an investigation. Like, I think this is most representative of, like, death has already been compelled to give us an answer... But I think it's cryptic, and Gray's wits are helping us understand what it means. Okay. Uh, that, that's how I choose to interpret it, anyway. Um, so on a weak hit, the information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover and take plus one momentum. Now, since you were the one doing that roll, we'll give you the momentum. Seems only fair. So, we need to figure out what is this complicated alternative. Because um, I think, you know, death doesn't want us to succeed. So it's not going to make it easy. Like, if it's not going to, if we're not going to kill that person, or that, that kid, then it's got to be something that is potentially more just like, not morally hard to do, but just like, hard to do in this amount of time. Um... Now, it could certainly be about the, like, obviously, as we kind of mentioned before in the last episode, I can't remember if it was during the episode or just us talking afterwards, but we've got this death cult out there, these people that worship death. Uh, I was literally thinking that. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it might be something that involves helping them. Um, or, yeah, in, in some kind of, in some way that would be very difficult to do. But it, it it might be about spreading that um, 
what if... But then we, we go back into that area of, like, it being just morally hard to do, which is not what I'm looking for. Like, it, it, it sounds like if we were to, like, promote that death cult and spread it through the world, that would, again, just be a thing where it's like, oh, well, no, I can't possibly do that. And then we'd just be back where we started. We need something that, like, I wouldn't have a problem with. It would just be very hard to accomplish. What if death is really sick of that cult and actually... Oh, like they're like, wrong? Yeah, like doesn't like how dictative they are of so many deaths and he, he's... That could like, be interesting because like... Sides. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. The kind of twist on how... Uh, leader yeah, I, I do like that idea that... Um, that even though they worship death, like, they're being blasphemous in doing it as far as death is concerned. Because, yeah, indeed, like, they are they are so just killing for nothing so constantly that, you know, yeah, they are making all of this artificial death when it is death's job to dole out that punishment. And they're, by invoking magics and stuff, they no are... Th yeah, <laughs> they're... Th <laughs> exactly. Really... But they're, they're, they're just making him angrier and angrier. Because it's just, it's robbing the, a natural death. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so what specifically does he want us to do? I, I think since it's indeed, like, this still has to follow up with, like, an extreme vow. Like, something that would take a long time to do. I think it's utterly about, like, like just utterly dismantling this, this cold. Like, completely destroying it. Um, in however that we see fit. If that's about just, like, cutting off the head and letting the rest rot, then maybe. But... Um, but I think we need to, yeah, the only way to make this right is to purge the world of, of this death cult. So, like, death is all about how, like, uh, like, looks to you again and says that, I know that you have run into those who call themselves my followers. They are a scourge that must be rid of this world. Rid from this world. And then, like, I think that's, like, the final word on it. And death just, like, disappears. Fades out. And then, like, very quickly, this, this world fades out around us as well. And we're, like, back outside the area that the, um, of the, what was, you know, this circle where it shows up wherever, whatever it's supposed to look like, um... I think suddenly we're just, like, outside of it again. Hmm. But we've... That is a huge task. Yeah. I mean, it's an extreme vow, so it seems like we should... It should be something that difficult. Um, so let's get that first point of progress, because we now have a direction. We've... Death has... Has given us an alternative and that's that's the important bit we can act on that so let me fill in that first half box of progress since this is an extreme vow every point of progress is half a box so we got a long way to go before we could really expect to do anything but just utterly miss on this vow that just needs to be red x there we go there's that half point of progress. Um, I wish we could have some proof that we met with death. Um, it it would be cool if there was some sign left on our, like, like it kind of like how like when struck by lightning, there's that very distinctive scar, um, that like yeah. branching path. Like it'd be it'd be cool if uh, if that were the thing. People who meet death. Might be brandished. Oh, it was just a, just occurring to me that um, when you cut me on the back, like I don't think it's still just like bleeding and everything like that. Because we talk about how much harder it is for like signs of life to happen in death's presence, I think it very quickly just like stopped bleeding. Um, mm. And so it's just like, yeah, like it bled just enough for death to get that blood, and then it just like stopped. So now it's just this open cut on the back that's just not bleeding. Um, but yeah, some kind of like mark of death would be pretty cool. I like that idea. Um, what if it's like three 
I know a lot of times people say, like, if there's three slashes on you, it's like a demon or something. Oh, yeah? Um, or it means that you were visited by a demon. It'd be interesting if it's just something like that. Okay. Yeah, something that probably, like, only people that are especially, like, superstitious or in the know would would know, but... Or, or maybe it's actual, like, super ancient symbols that nobody has ever read or seen. Although that would not make sense. I like the but simplicity maybe, yeah, if they're maybe. just being, like, the three, like, slashes, like, all right there. Like, I like the kind of simplicity of that. We still, I would, well, the reason I'm, at, I'm saying this is because I want to be able to prove to somebody that we, particularly the death cult, I want to be yeah. able to prove to them that we that would be cool. encountered death. And... Well, why don't we, why don't we roll an oracle to see, like, do we have some kind of mark like this? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. You know, are we lucky enough to have that sort of proof to those in the know? Hey, Chuck. Welcome back. So, again, I think this is just a 50-50. Like, I have no particular leaning or thinking of why it would be one way or the other. Um, I think it's very possible that death could leave some kind of a mark. But at the same time, it's also just death's avatar. So, maybe not. And maybe that's just not how it works. So, let's see. Do we do we bear some kind of mark of our brush with death? No. And in fact, I, I rolled so low that even if I had put that as almost certain, it still would have been no. Um, so mm. apparently the the oracle's not on our side this time. This was maybe it's indeed just because this was only death's avatar. Like that's only really for those who, um who have found their way into, like, the underworld and are literally, like, in their physical body, like, face-to-face -face with the actual god of death. Um, yeah. Like, I, like, you probably, like, read something about that in in the texts. Um, uh, like, there was, like, some, like, Muko had some theories or something like that, but we're learning now. Like, in, and so you start, like, checking for them or something and then finding, like, no, it, it must be more literally, like, this... This was only the image of death, and even that one was that powerful. Hmm. Darn it. Who was... Grey's... Who? Kind of excited that she met death. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but we know. What did he mean by that? What... Did death said that you... There... You had encountered people that... His followers? I, what does that mean? You were, you were there, Flint. Oh yeah, that's true. I, mean, I guess Flint was observing the ball, but <laughs> never mind. Yeah, never mind. I forget that Flint wasn't alive, and but he was still aware of it all. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I get. I take it he was talking about. He must have been talking about the people back in Black Falls. That's what I assume he's talking about, but how do, he wants us to end a cult? Like, it just seems impossible. It's the only way forward, though. Death wants to make it difficult. Look, I completely understand if... If it's putting yourself too much on the line and too dangerous, I... This is not your burden to bear. You don't have to put yourself out there, but I I do beg of you to... I don't know if I can do it alone. Um, I'll do what I can. I'm, I'm with you, Flint. I don't want to see you succumb to death so soon. Let's, let's figure this out. Well, I guess it's time for us to ride then, since... Black Falls is now a ways back. And at the very least, I imagine that that's... If there's ever a place to look for him, that would be there. Um, I just hate to backtrack, but looks like we have no choice. And with that in mind a little bit, we mentioned last time how it's now been like... A like, it's with the road back and everything, it's going to kind of add up to enough time that we have not been specifically, um, 
working on this uncovering the mystery of the glowing obelisks and th this is the one that's indeed against that death cult um where if we're not constantly making progress on that you know they are making progress and i, I feel like it's been enough time yeah. that we can maybe see like what's their latest development especially if we're about to run into them again like you know what's mm -hmm. what's changed so it's very possible too like i i was thinking what if there's been this growing desire for everyone to travel towards the obelisks because we Maybe. know that, that some groups are trying of of that cult are trying to yeah um travel to the obelisks and well we we know in the uh, long in the long term they're going to last time the the only progress they've made so far in their kind of like grand plan last time it was that they they kicked out anybody who wasn't part of that religion that was the that was step one um as they're just kind of continuing their spread and coming to that decision eventually um i don't believe in world they have quite yet gone for the like starting to make a pilgrimage to the obelisk that was like eventually they will and they're going to use that for like a terrible weapon of death but um mm. but they're not there yet i seen a quick reminder on i'm opening up delve because this is this is in the so this is from a supplement to the game called Delve. Uh, there is a threats mechanic, which we're using, where you're kind of doing a vow in opposition to a, a threat, an active presence that's also trying to do something. And so you're kind of on, in a race against them to make progress before they do. And, okay, tracking a threat. Yeah, so we have time, time has passed. Yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. One of the... One of the ways we advance a threat is time passes as you undertake length undertake lengthy expeditions or recover from your adventures. For example, you spend several days delving a forbidden forest to recover an artifact which is critical to your quest. Although you are ultimately successful in obtaining the object, the time you spent gives the threat an opportunity to act. I think between all the time in the elf forest and here and the road back, like it definitely qualifies as enough time has passed that we should advance their threat. Mm -hmm. Um so we're going to make the advance a threat move. And I think roll 20 has this in the sheet now. Yeah, there are, I think it has delve involved. Yes, advance a threat. So we're going to roll on this chart to find out what happens. Thirty-three. The threat works subtly to advance towards its goal or the danger or the danger escalates. Mark menace. Um, okay, so I've already marked the menace. Uh, that's why both those asterisks are black as opposed to red. Like, they've both been filled in by... as just our way of indicating that uh, in shorthand. So they, they've got another subtle advancement in their agenda. So what's the next subtle thing they could do? I, I feel like it might just be, like, since it's so behind the scenes like that and they need to do their studies, like, maybe it's indeed about how, um, you know, one of... Their inner clergy has begun, you know, pouring over all these old texts and um, maybe even, maybe even there was like a few pages from Muko's um, journal that, that got like separated or something and were still under the bed and they found them. Yeah. And so like, they're finally able to pair like some of their religious knowledge with uh, his writings and they've been pouring over them and finally determining that there is power in it was fine and they're like we need this yeah and like like there's power in the obelisks they so they're they're determining that there is something they could do with those obelisks that would that that could fuel their cause i still don't think that they've yet gotten to the point where they know specifically they're going to make like a big super death weapon out of it but they they their attention has been turned to it and they know that this requires more um, more attention because the an object of this power should be used to glorify our god. I feel like some of the great leaders would want to be a part of it and witness it. So what if all the the major leaders of the city actually leave? Like they make this big yeah, and like uh, and since it's subtle, like they do it. Maybe they do it secretly, where like. As far as the town is concerned, everybody's still there, but, like, some of the most inner circle, yeah, they've gone on this secret pilgrimage. 
Um, that could be kind of cool. Because I imagine they want to control it directly, and they want to. They do. They. Charge of everything. So. The only thing I want to keep in mind is just making sure that we've still got enough. St like, there's going to be a lot of steps along the way, and making sure that there's we don't get them too close to kind of the the end goal too quickly. Um. But they still have a long journey ahead of them, if nothing else. So I, I think this is fine. So yeah. Perhaps some of the... Like, not everybody, but a couple of the most um, major players. And we might as well have um, Sarah be one of them. Just to keep our, yeah. <laughs> keep our key characters around. So Sarah and probably a couple of other, like, major clergy have, have left the town secretly. And they are en route to the obelisks now. Which means we might even encounter them on the road then. If there's kind of... Like, if we had gone from Black Falls in the direction of the... Uh, uh, in the direction of the obelisks, then... Exactly. We might encounter them. So yeah, uh, our, the threat has advanced. And it's time for us to head back in that direction then and see what we can do man I, I i wish that we did have that sign on our body because i really like the did like the direction of of being able to like show to them that yeah. like we had the this brush with them. and we still might be able to we just don't have that proof um, maybe they have a way of sensing it or proving it who knows um that's all questions that we'll find out along the way. How about we have to take a journey, though, and start heading back? Yeah, <laughs> Let us hit the road to head back in the direction of Black Falls. Damn it. We had come so far. We did. We got to turn around, though. I think this is enough of a, of a distance that we're... It's probably a, a, a dangerous amount of how, how far we're going. All right, I guess we... Um, yeah, the way we'd been doing it before was just like all of these were just stops along the way to the obelisk. But now, now that we're literally going in the opposite direction, I don't know that we can really wrap this into, like, this is just one more milestone on the way to the obelisk. It's, no, we're turning around and doing a different journey. Um, yeah. So let's just say it is dangerous, and uh, we'll have some stops along the way and try and get there. <clears throat> Alright, so that makes it vow number four. The thing in the vow slot. I'm, put, I'm just going to have this on your sheet. It is going to be a journey back to Black Falls. And we'll set that as dangerous. Whoop. And let's have you lead the way. Right. Oh, unless you'd like to, um, like before we hit the road, this might not. This might be a good opportunity to get to like try and invoke that essence real quick. Like if, oh, yeah. Like if we're if we're about to be going on with this like completely huge task of taking down an entire like dangerous death cult that's been utterly taking over one of the biggest cities, uh, the biggest city we've ever seen, and it's just like got its roots all mixed in there. Um, then. Perhaps we should you should prepare yourself, especially while you're closer to the uh, to the obelisk. Yeah, good point. So I guess I just stop, take a moment. I'm sitting on Thornberry, and I'm kind of scouring the land a little bit, and yeah, take that moment. Just like breathe it in. Do you think that, um, like, to an outside observer, does that look like any? Like, can we see? like essence entering your body or is it like an, an invisible process i think it's invisible but i think um my hands do start glowing when i do this so right know. and it's noticeable if someone happened to be looking at my hands but I just... yeah okay well let's see what kind of essence you get so we're going to make a wits roll for you but dink <laughs> and another weak hit. We have literally only what rolled. We have literally only rolled weak hits today because the challenge. And we've been rolling well on the action dice, but the, uh, mm -hmm. but the challenge. They've been. 
They've been really high. Yeah, this is where we started. You know, that's this is where I opened up roll twenty today. The only things have been oracles and weak hits. Literally every single roll. Now, granted, that's the the math is the math is made to try and make weak hits more common, but all the same. So on a weak hit, you're going to get to get this essence, but it's the one where you're gonna have to endure some more stress. Um, which is a shame because your your spirit is actually not so high right now after that brush with death. Um, so, uh, let's see. Make sure I'm doing it right. You know, on a weak hit, you all the same as above, but it's it's a harrowing experience, and you know it's your first time doing it, so maybe that's all the more why it kind of doesn't go quite right because it's it's unfamiliar, and maybe it's the type of thing where you like you try and pull it all in too quickly. So like that kind of flow of energy is like, it's, it's a lot to handle. Um, and so, yeah, it just, it, it gives you two stress, which is going to put you down to zero. So we're definitely going to want to, we're going to want to get a chance to recover sooner rather than later. Yeah. But, and we could both use it after all of that, <laughs> the, the sword and the brush with death. So yeah, you're, you're down to zero, but let's see how you endure it. We'll take it from your heart. Hey, finally, a strong hit. Look at that. Yeah. And because you had so much heart, you actually got a strong hit by rolling the bare minimum. Um, nice. Yeah. So on a strong hit, this is the one where you've got an opportunity to get something back, I believe. So on a strong hit, choose one. Shake it off. If your spirit is greater than zero, sadly it is not anymore, you could you could get some back in exchange for one momentum, but again, you, you're at zero, so you don't have that opportunity. It's, it's too low to just shake it off. But you do have the ability to embrace the darkness, which gives you plus one momentum. So, uh, in what way do you think Gray is, is embracing darkness in this moment to get that momentum? Um, yeah. maybe it's actually getting dark out. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be that. It's just that, how we have this long journey. Oh, just kind of like embracing the, like, what we're going to have to do ahead of us and accepting, like, there's probably yeah. going to be death involved, and that's just the way it's going to have to be. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, let's give you your plus one momentum for that. And let's give you your essence. So the way it works is we take whatever you rolled on the challenge die, which is four, or on the uh, action die. So you rolled a four when we were making that initial wits roll, which means you will now have four essence. So let me bump that up to four. So as a reminder, the way you can use this moving forward is at any point that you are making a secure an advantage or a face danger roll, which is, you know, kind of our bog standard kind of stuff that we do, and will come up in combat a lot as well, if there's combat. Um, you can always choose to, instead of using whatever stat would be involved, tap into that magic that you have inside of you and you instead you'll roll with a plus four, and then that'll it'll go down. But so it's kind of like a, a new bank that you can use. Nice. And right now it's going to be as high as your highest stat. So like if it's if it's something you'd be doing with heart anyway, you might as well not bother because you'd have the same amount. But any of your other stats, it's you know it would it would benefit you. Which the cool thing about that is now you can do things like, hey, I may be. Sh I may not be good with my sword with just my raw strength, but when I invoke this magic, now I'm, like, as best as they come. <laughs> like, you can get by with having that tiny iron. Sweet. All right. And with that, let's hit the road. All right. Come along, Thornberg. Yeah, give it, give it a little kick. I assume that I'm just, like, on the back. And, like, as we're, as we're like, walking along the road, I just kind of say, like, First up, first opportunity. Can we please get me some clothes? <laughs> it's yes, we can. <laughs> utterly frigid. Still got that blanket, right? 
it's something, but you know, it's it's kind of itchy and it's <laughs> only covers so much. All right. Next time, next time we come across. Yeah. All right. Here's undertake a journey. So we are going to use your wits and see what happens here. There we go. Another strong hit. Finally pushing us in the right direction here. Lovely. Getting over this weak hit hump. So a couple mm -hmm. of strong hits. The this one means that we will. There it is. You, we reach a waypoint. If the waypoint is unknown to you, envision it. Uh, then choose one. I imagine, given that it was kind of the last waypoint we had on this journey, we'd probably come back to um, uh, to Pine Shadow. That would be like the next place yeah. along the road. Uh, then choose one. We could either make good use of our resources and just mark progress, or if we want to mark two progress, and, or mark progress and take one momentum, we would, uh, we'd lose a supply. Which, admittedly, supply is pretty low. So I don't know that we should do that one. We should probably just take the progress and uh, accept that. Yeah. Alright, so... Boop, boop. Got our progress. And yeah, we um, lead, lead us back to Pine Shadow, which is now indeed, like, there's... Um, hey there's, guys, we're back. Yeah, the, the snow's not falling. Yeah, it's been like a day or two. Um, the snow is no longer falling. And the, um, yeah, probably like a day's ride. They have made pretty good progress on clearing out a section of their fields since they like got, got the whole town together to kind of get that happening. Uh, you see, I think we see some people like in the process of like tilling and like otherwise like, um, starting the planting process to make use of the time they have while it's not wintry. I feel like the, um, that, like, the pole that has the giant, like, ice bar on top of it is still up. It's still, it's still balanced there. Do you think it's still spinning? It's just, like, slowly... I don't think it's still like, spinning just because, um, as we recall, the, like, we had to complete the ritual before it stopped spinning. Um, oh. So, so I don't think it's still spinning, just for that reason of the way that was supposed to work. But uh, people definitely recognize you, and there's a a cry out from uh, from the town, like "Gray, it's Gray, Gray's come back." And there's like a great excitement, um, a great excitement, um, as people start like hustling to try and like get things prepared and properly be ready for your arrival. Like, I think somebody in the field saw you and started just, like, running towards town to, like, um, <laughs> deliver the message. And then, uh, like, yeah, by the time we get there, there's, like, people are all ready to accept us and, like, I think even have, like, I imagine maybe they've made, like, a laurel out of, like, woven together pine needles um, to, like, gift to you as a as a as another gesture of thanks of what you did for the town and god what was what was the mayor's name i can't remember anymore um oh yeah i have it you have it, it okay. was kulan kulan okay kulan is definitely there to bestow this uh this this pine laurel and uh has I guess Naya was there as well, though didn't do as much. So, like, as far as they're concerned, Naya, I guess they... Yeah, they, they only made the one. It, it's for you. You you were the one who did the, the main thing. Um, they probably still greet him, and they might be kind of taken aback because smells like, real fresh. your voice is different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not Naya anymore. It is not Naya. It's Flint, some... and they, they might be curious because we did tell them that we were going to do... A ritual. We didn't tell them what we were gonna do. Yeah. Did... The Kulan. Yeah. Like it. Flint is. Uh... I guess. Yeah. Kulan starts off by saying, "We did not expect you to return so soon, but we're ever grateful to to see your face. Welcome back, Gray." I 
thank them graciously and graciously. Yeah. <laughs> They're very grateful. <laughs> and just ask if we could take shelter for the night and recover. And I think we do need to. We do. And stock up on supplies and just say we had a change of plans. And I think that we will always, until something changes, uh, pretty much always have a home here with them. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. If they they will happily yeah we're we're putting on the soup and everything basically we're setting up to do the um uh the sojourn move to just spend time in this community they'll help take care of us uh they they like us and i think during that process yeah they probably learn at some point flint will be saying something and they'll some people will ask some questions about it like they'll how how open do you think you are about it all like uh, are we just, like, giving them the full, just, like, telling them? I think yeah, yeah, I Flint think, would I probably think... point in that direction. I was like, fuck it, why does it matter? Like... Yeah, because we did, we, I openly said that we needed to perform a ritual. And yeah. We might ask how the ritual <laughs> went and say, yeah. And then, and then like, and Flint I, speaks up at that moment. Bad. It's just like, the the ritual went very successfully. And everybody's like, you sound very different what was the ritual and like that's kind of our opportunity to like i think we're all sitting around the kettle and uh talking about it and we we, we give him some of the details of what happened flint would not go into the details regarding like and now we're going to uh deal with the death cult and we need to make a favor to death like yeah it talks about the like coming back part but not all of the like repercussions of what that means we're just all like this is no longer naya this is flint Say hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. You may recall, those of you with keener eyes may have remembered the bottle around Gray's neck that had a mode of light in it. Well, that was me. I have a body again. So let's make the sojourn move and get this opportunity to recover. So we're going to use your heart because it's higher. And... Uh, Let's see what we got. No, they're pretty close. Sojourn. <laughs> Bup. Boop. A miss. Wow. Those challenge dice went super high. So on a miss, it goes badly and you lose all benefits for that action. Uh, we're going to have to figure out what that means. Because I don't think it's because they were unkind or anything like that. But for whatever reason, like... Maybe it's just because we, we're not spending enough time to, like, really relax and recuperate. Because um, we are kind of just, like, stopping here for the night and then moving on. So I think it's just that. Like, to really have benefited from all this, we would have had to spend, like, a lot longer here among the community, like, recovering. And we just don't get it. Now, the one benefit, though, let's remember, this is a miss. So you finally, we're going to get a tick on that learn from failure track. So let's give you that. Upgrade this to a red X. There we go. Uh, so yeah, we just, we have a good time. We talk with everybody. They're very nice. They get us fed. But it's just not enough. And, you know, they don't have enough to spare to really replenish our supply. And it's still just, maybe yeah, it's they also. The help, but they just can't really, they don't have and maybe it's also just that, like, in terms of our spirit, like, it's all nice in the moment. Like, they help take care of us and they get our minds off of it. And then as soon as we hit the road again, it just dawns on us all over again. It's like, that was this cool distraction, but it's still really serious and stressful. And, like, it's all still very all too real. Yeah. And so, like, we, like, briefly had a, our spirits higher and then they just fell away again. So yeah, I guess we'll continue on the road. See what we can do to get back to him. Let's keep going. Well, goodbye, Pine Shadow. I think the the laurel smells really nice. Yeah, it's nice and piney. Yeah, it's it's you. You basically got your own little like pine scented thing hanging from your the rear view mirror on uh, on Thornberry now. <laughs> yeah. Journey. Nice and memorabilia. And boop. 
Okay, another. We've been rolling so high on the challenge dice today. So many tens on them. Another weak hit. Uh, I believe this one means we're going to mark progress, but we're going to lose a supply, which is a shame because that means we are going to be out of supply. Damn it. Uh, indeed, mark progress, but suffer minus one supply. So, yeah, I was really hoping that we'd be able to replenish in town, but that's not the way it worked. So, yeah, our communal supply is now out. Which means we are now going to have the unprepared condition. And all sorts of unfortunate crap. But we do mark progress. We we make it there, we continue along to the next waypoint, which we're going to have to figure out what that is and see what happens. Um, we might need to make some camp or something. Because I imagine this one is... This one is probably more towards, like, the... Um, around where the we get back into that huge enchanted forest. We're probably close to that area based on what we've already seen. Uh, sorry, I'm just finding the right things. My my mind just always goes blank when I'm looking for uh, the right source to, to alter. All right, so we've updated that. We have run out of supply. I need to mark some conditions for both of us. We are now unprepared. Boo. <laughs> My stomach yeah. starts growling. It does, yeah. Like, My stomach starts growling. <laughs> exactly. Running out of food here. It's like, I'm sorry, Thornberry. Yeah, let me do the Maybe same thing. Like, we, we should be able to do some hunting or something like that. Now, as I recall, the only way to, like, get supply back up is, like, we'd, we'd have to indeed do that sojourn move and have it work. Uh, I don't think you can bring supply up by camping, but I may be mistaken. We will see. All right, so now I'm unprepared as well. And my supply needs to go down. So everybody, I always hate when just having to uh, take the, just do all the, like, bookkeeping stuff and dead air, but... Okay, I'll entertain some, them. Do it. Keep them entertained. <laughs> Quite literally. Alright, I've got it all updated. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, let's find out what kind of place is this. I... I guess it's, as mentioned, it's just kind of like outside the, the woods of the elven forest. Or the, mm -hmm. granted, not all of it is the elven woods, but like that enchanted place that contains elven woods within. Maybe this is the moment when um, when Rascal comes back. Um, like, because he, like, he would have met up with us, like, as we're reaching the forest and, like, we cross back through. Uh, he's delivered the, um, delivered the jar and all that, like, done the thing. And, um... I wonder if there's a note from the elves, like a message back. Mm. Let's Good see. Question. Yeah, let's ask the oracle. Do the elves send a message back or do they just take it and like keep to themselves? I think it's likely they have at least some kind of message. Yeah, I feel like they would. It writes something. Like something formal. Yeah. So do the elves uh, send my raven back with a message? Yes. Yes, they do. So let's figure out a little bit about, like, when Rascal comes back, like, what is this message that we've got? Um, I think at the very least it would acknowledge, like, that we've, we've received the, um, you know, we've received Naya's uh, spirit and will... And we'll receive Naya's spirit and the, the pipes and... We and it was it was proper of you to return these to us. So like they 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 like praise your your judgment in that situation. Um, but it has that kind of like undertone of like some elven superiority of like that was really good judgment for a human kind of thing. Yeah. Um. And thanking us probably. Yeah. 
maybe maybe saying you have friends here if you ever need them. So that's that's what I want to roll an oracle on. Like, are they that friendly now, or is it still just like you know? Or they could be pissed at us for doing that to Naya. Yeah, like we need to find out. Like, how do they feel about this? Like, that's the setup. But for more information on this note, like, how do they feel about what happened to Naya? Um, yeah. So, first oracle question: Are they okay with what ha like? Is this whole arrangement we have with Naya and like doing the swap? Are they okay with that? Now, granted, we you like talked to elders before and like they helped you out and recognized that there was this life debt, but that was really only so that you were allowed in the village. It wasn't for mm -hmm. the full like you can swap bodies thing. <laughs> so, I think at best this is fifty fifty, and it's possibly leaning towards unlikely that they're okay with it. But I, I'm willing to go with just 50-50. So let's see. Are the elves okay with what happened to Naya? Yes. Okay. They they are understanding. It's just, I guess it's it's all part of that life debt. Uh, they truly respect that as an institution. And, mm -hmm. Like, that's just the way it was supposed to be. So they, they fully respect it. Uh, so like, next... Well, this is the way it has to be. Exactly. And then the next question is, I guess, like, do they consider us just, like, comrades at this point and are free to just, like, enter the village or the fort? Like, are we allowed to just come and go? Or is that still just off limits? I think that one's unlikely just because they are so protective of it. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe. So let's see. Are we allowed to just come and go in the fortress? No. Okay. And... <laughs> Even on a 50-50, that, that would have been... That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's probably what I would have said, too. They're just, no... They would, Please steer clear from our dwellings. <laughs> they probably have a point about that in the note. That, like, our... It's probably something along the lines of how, like... Like, our business is... Your business among us is concluded. Um, we ask that you keep to your own path. Yeah. That makes um, sense. And I think that's more or less what it says. Uh, I don't think there's too much more in the note. But we, but yeah, we get a, a correspondence with them. I just want if there's, I want one more thing though, which is like I want to find out, is there like, do they have a contingency in case of like emergency, like you know, in case something truly dire is happening, he, like, are they will they say that we are allowed to like send send a raven, in contact, like, will they allow Maybe further communication? Yeah. <laughs> You have a lovely raven. Send him back anytime. If yeah, you your need. your raven's great. <laughs> Knows some great jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd put that one as 50-50. Like, are they open to just more communication at least? Yeah. No, not even that. And even <gasps> that that Ooh. one ro that one rolled so low that even on almost certain again that wouldn't have flown. So yeah. Um, not so even... the, so that's the final line of that is uh, after the like our after like please keep to your own path um they make it clear that um we expect no further communications from you Aww. yeah they they keep to their they keep to their own but hey i mean it really goes along with what we established about them yeah like the the oracles make sense like in the end it's not like we it's not like you did some great grand thing for them like the people of pine shadow like you were just yeah. there and did some stuff. It's not like they're like, oh man, you're you're one of them. Like you did pass that test, yeah. but our business was among, between one of their members. Exactly. They have a huge, probably a huge. But hey, population. the important thing is they don't. Uh, you know, they're not offended by what happened or anything. They're not angry about it, but they're done. Don't don't go crying to us, and like please leave us alone. Well, I guess we don't have the elves as an ally, but. Good job, Rascal. Don't give him praise. It just encourages him. He probably nips at me anyway. So. Yeah. Because he's Rascal. Yeah, exactly. And he's hungry, and you're not giving him food, so he just kind of nips you. Um, oh, I want to keep in mind, though, that what, what I do have for him, he's a sly raven, and so if I ever need him to create a distraction or steal a small object or something like that, he'll be better at it. Um, nice. Yeah, so I need to keep that in mind. 
Especially if we need to, like, steal some food or something. Do but... we come back across that, uh, that castle full of foul people that are, like... Oh, the, the like, bandit camp? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need to. Like, if we chose to go that way, we could. But I think it's enough off the road that we will, we're not just, like, necessarily going past it. Um, yeah, I think we can avoid <laughs> I remember it. Remember that, and I was like, oh. And then just, but they are still in this area, and they are bandits. So I think if something goes wrong here, it would make sense that like that might be one of the repercussions is yeah. that there are bandits around. So why don't we make some camp and um, see if we can get some food and recover something? Sounds like fun. Yeah. Do some foraging or. Up a rabbit trap or something. Yeah. Oh, right. That's right. Wait, the role we're making is not make camp because that is. Okay. Well, there's a different one. There's resupply uh, when we try and like hunt in the woods and stuff like that. Making camp. I guess it's it's roll plus supply. I just want to do a quick check on it in the rules to find out like if you're unprepared, can you? If you have zero supply, can you make that move? I'm not certain. I just want to check that really quick. I need to open up the full rule book real quick. Find this section. So I'm going to look up the make camp move. Let's see. Yeah, indeed what I thought. If you have the unprepared condition marked, you can't resupply. Instead you, instead, you need to find help in a community when you sojourn. So yeah, we can't make camp because we have no supply, but we can resupply to try and hunt and forage and just like make do in the wild. Okay. So, uh, let's do it. Yeah. So it uses wits and you're way better at that than I am. So it makes sense. You're also a person who has eyes that work. So if you, if you don't mind, uh, helping sc score us up some food, I'll do what I can to just like make a shelter. All right. Flint, try to keep warm. I will uh, be back as soon as I can. Hopefully with some food. Oh, uh, can we can we roll in and say that like in the time that we did spend in Pine Soul, we were able to like somebody tailored some like put together some more formal clothes for uh, for Naya. Um, I would like to say that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> just so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And we talked about the first time, town that we went in that we would do that. So he's got something. It probably fits not very well because it's such a huge body. But, but it's something. There are some kind of more actual clothes that that Flint is wearing now. But I like to think I still say. Oh yeah. Try to keep warm. <laughs> totally, it's still cold. Stay warm. I'll be back. All right. Well, let us resupply then, and see what you can what you can do for us. Right. Weak hit. So many of them today. But I'll take that over having so many misses, which, you know, I, I can't help but think back to that first session we had where we did just like seven misses in a row for our first rolls. <laughs> that was horrible. Just got off to a terrible start. So on a weak hit, take up to plus two supply, but suffer minus one momentum for each. Um, thankfully. Oh, uh, never mind. Same thing. If you have the unprepared condition, you can't resupply. Um. Can't. Oh, you know what? That's what I was reading before. I, I read that you can't resupply. So can we make camp? I imagine the same thing. We can't do that. I'm just going to check. Okay, yeah, so I, I had it backwards then. Um, we can't resupply because, like, apparently we got to have some supplies to make. Like, we don't even have the supplies to do hunting is, I think, the problem. Like, oh. we're just out of stuff. Um, what we can do, we can still make camp, though, and what we do is we roll our supply. So we, we'd roll with a plus zero and see how well it happens. Um, we just, we're not likely to do very well because we have such little supply left. But we can make camp. I just okay. read through. There's there's nothing there that okay, suggests yeah. 
that we can't make camp and recuperate other things like our health and our spirit stuff like that. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, um, we can't. Now, if you want a better shot at this working, we could always try and... Or I guess technically we're not facing danger or security advantage. Never mind. You can't, you can't just blast through this with magic. Never mind. <laughs> that is for specific moves, and this isn't one of them. Damn. So instead... Let us make camp with zero supply. And see. Okay, Sam was all so close to a strong hit despite all that. He rolled the maximum, but that challenge I just had to go just one too high. But still a weak hit, uh, which I think is going to allow us to choose one thing from, from a list. Let me see. Make camp. When you rest and recover for several hours in the wild, roll plus supply, have done. On a strong hit, we, we get to choose two of these. On a weak hit, we get to choose one. So we will each get to choose one of these for ourselves. So here are our options. Recuperate, which is take plus one health for you and any companions. Um, now, importantly, companion is like, that's not me. That is, I, th I think companion is like Thornberry or like any other things like that that you would have. I just, I'll check that to be certain, but considering it said allies up above and companions now, I'm pretty sure companion is a different thing. Um, partake, which is suffer minus one supply and take plus one health for you. So it's the way that you can double up, but there'd be no reason to do that. It's a worse version of recuperate. Um, so basically, you could, take a, you could take a health. You could take a spirit by relaxing. You could focus and take momentum. Or you can prepare and take plus one on this next undertake a journey move. I think okay. I, like for my part, let me take a look at what I've got here. Flint, yeah, both health yeah, and spirit, spirit are, <laughs> yeah, your spirit is a lot lower than your health. It makes sense. Oh, I also forgot, uh, Flint's momentum has to go up a little bit because we hit that first milestone on finding, finding a way to oppose death. And the whole thing with Oathbreaker is when I hit milestones, I get plus two momentum. So I forgot to give myself that. Let me do it now. Boop, boop. Actually, did I forget to do that? Actually, I actually think I might have done it because I, I don't remember being a plus. Yeah, I was because I got plus one from that. And yeah, never mind. Five it is. All right, so you're going to take the spirit. I think I'm going to take the health. I'm just going to rest a little bit and just let that back heal up a little bit more and get used to this new body. Um, so, boop, boop. Mess around with your flats. See if you can fly the wall. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to. As we, I think he's just like too heavy now. He doesn't have, there's something kind of magical about how light an, an elf is in this body, in a body this huge. And now that he's not actually an elf, it just doesn't work. He'll never get enough lift. No, I refuse to believe <laughs> that. I I feel like in certain circumstances we could still use it. Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll unlock it. If I make like a vow about it and like really put in the effort to figure it out. So yeah, we, we rest on the road for a little while and you know, try and keep things light and guarded. We don't want the bandits to see us, so I imagine that we've kind of set it up in a way that there's kind of like um like a little bit of a wall that we've erected between the fire and the road um, so that it's not quite as visible from the distance. And Maybe we find some giant rocks. Yeah. Just kind of build it behind that. We, we find a good spot to stay outside of that view so that we don't get robbed of our... We don't have any supply anyway. But so it doesn't turn ugly. And with that, we can hit the road again and continue to see what happens. I feel like um, now that we've, every point of progress we make moving on, there's, I think there should be a chance that we run into um, the members of the cult that are on the road. Like now, now that yeah. we've gone this far, any given time, we should ask the Oracle to see like, do we, do we run into them? Yeah. Maybe they're sen sending them out in like intermittent troops. Well, I meant even the, um, the leaders that were going on their secret mission. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
since they're since they're headed towards the obelisk and we're going away from them, like at some point we very well might cross paths. Yeah. Unless they especially stray far from the road or something. So like I think it's possible that we never will, but every time from now on, I think we should check to see like did that happen? <laughs> and all right, let's continue with our journey. Another weak hit. So again, uh, we take a hit to supply to make progress, which, mean, which means we lose some momentum out of this, sadly. Uh, since we don't have the supply to, to afford, momentum will go down by one. Yeah, it is a shame. But I think this represents it indeed, just like we're just barely scraping by, and like, it's a... It's a long road, and we, we just don't have the food on us to really... Like, our stomachs are growling the whole time. We're made, It's really wearying, so it's just... Meanwhile, meanwhile, Death is giggling to himself. Exactly. Somewhere. This is exactly how... Yeah, as far as Death is concerned, if it kills both of us to try and do this, then so be it. Granted, your health is fine. you you got plenty of health at the moment. Uh, so let's get another... Let's find out, did we cross paths? as I mark progress on this journey. Okay. So we're gonna ask the Oracle on this. I think it's just like a 50-50. Um, do we run into members of the death cult along the way? Yes, we do. Shit, I'm so not ready. <laughs> So at some point, I and I'll ask again, like, are is this the like the, the the group that's on a secret mission with like Sarah and everything, or is this just like other members that have started yeah. going out a around? <laughs> yeah, um, I imagine they're sending out people in groups. People around to start just like they're trying to have a little bit more dominion over their area and religion and everything. Um, I think it's mostly like trying to keep better tabs on the people coming and going around so they can be prepared for like they don't like outsiders so much anymore um, so they've just got kind of like roaming people keeping a watch out on the land and like sending messages back yeah. because they're getting more protected like that so I think it's more likely it's one of those than it is that we run into like the the big group but writing their influence everywhere so let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna ask is this the, the main group with saran i'm gonna rate it as unlikely and we'll see it is not so it, it's just one of the um one of the regular one of the patrols is going around here and we we encounter them now i don't think they're they're immediately just violent um like, we're not in their town or anything, and I... Oh, well, I guess one more oracle. Do they recognize Grey? Uh, like, there's a, there's a lot of yeah, members. They, I don't, I don't they think... They wouldn't recognize Flint. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't recognize Flint. They have no reason to recognize him. But you've encountered a few of them, but there are so many in total. So this very well could be somebody that doesn't recognize you. So I'm going to say that as far as recognizing you, it's unlikely just because... It's such a small percentage of them that really knows you specifically. Mm. So let's see. Do they recognize Grey? They do. Oh, shit. Despite it being unlikely. We've, we've done a bunch from today that go against the Grey. You do. Now you just look weirder, but your face is still the same. <laughs> Damn um, it. Yeah, it, it turns out that at least somebody in this group does recognize you. Now, mm. again, what they do about that is still up in the air. I don't think that they're necessarily immediately being, like, drawing swords about it. But at least one person here recognizes you. And I think, to make things interesting and fair, I think you recognize them right back. Like, your eyes meet, and, like, you both acknowledge, like, you know who each other are. Now... What if he recognizes me but can't remember where? Uh, I, I think it's that, been a while. I think it violates the spirit of it. What if this is the, um... But she has antlers now, so... Yeah. And the question is, of course, from where they recognize you. Um, 
the one that popped into my mind was actually the uh, the guy that you tried to that was like we don't have any gold here, um, that had the guard dog. Oh, it could be. Because he was more or less kind to you and told you to just get out of here. That's but, right. Because he was just like, it's fucking, there's nothing to get here, but just leave us alone. So why don't we make it that guy? And I can't remember if we even gave him a name. Um, I don't think we needed. I don't think we needed to. Um, but he did tell you to leave them alone, and now you're crossing paths again. But granted, you're not exactly crossing paths where they're like in the middle of a ritual or something. So it's a little bit different. Um, but I, I, I think we, we get to a spot on the road and there's like some, let's get an idea of like what kind of landscape this is. I like the idea of there being like kind of like a rocky over, like them, them having like high ground over us, like as if we're going through like a mountain pass or something. And, yeah, maybe um, we're coming up over a ridge and we see them. Cause we know Black Falls is of course like in, in kind of more of a mountain area and have like the big cliff precipice. So like we'd have to be starting to get into yeah. more like foothills and stuff. So yeah, maybe we're, we're like going around and we like cross around a bend like on a on a turn going along this path and we uh, we start hearing like kind of oh, a travelers. Yeah, and there's like a rustling above on the, there's like this uh this like ledge in the in the mountain that's been kind of uh it's, it's like a just a natural formed ledge and it hangs over like um i don't think that i was i'm trying to imagine if there's like a cave underneath it or something but i, I think it's just like and then it's just the wall it's just more like path wending through mountains but um but yeah there some guard post is here to uh, to check who's going through the mountains and heading towards black falls so yeah, they, they, I, I think there's a, yeah, it starts off more friendly like that, or at least with like a thin veneer of friendliness where, well, something like Ho Travelers, but then mm -hmm. they're just like, please stop, wh stop where you are and state your business. Like it, it quickly devolves into something like that. So let's see. So it's the two of us on back of Thornberry, who it's a good thing Thornberry is mighty to support this huge elf body as well. Um, Do I say my real name? Maybe, maybe f I jab Flint. Like you say something. Okay. Um, so Flint is going to say. Actually, this is pretty much true. Uh, please, we're, we're, we're weary. We find ourselves weary from the road and without supplies, desperately looking for wherever they can find. Could you spare some, uh, could you spare a meal for, for some, some, for some tired travelers? And I think they respond like, uh, if you like, if you state your business, like starting to get a little bit more pushy about it. And he says, "I, I think he's gonna he's gonna lie here and say that they're that we're we're simply pa simply passing through on our on our way towards home." Uh, he said, "Simply passing through on our way towards home," and let's see if they buy that. So Flint. He is gonna compel with uh or face hey, danger with it? with shadow sorry what what is flint wearing now uh whatever kind of clothes they could have made in in a uh, pine shadow i imagine they're like definitely it's more cold weather kind of stuff because that's where they live so probably um just like pants and a tunic and and then just like a fur cloak on top okay. and, I th and i think indeed like the the pants and tunic have just been made to be like they have no idea like how big he was so they just made like really loose fitting ones that are just like kind of tied around with like some rope or something to keep him up um because he's had weird measurements <laughs> all right so i'm gonna i'm going to try and compel them to uh, like leave us alone give us no tr 
give us no trouble, and I'm going to do it by lying. So let's see. But I have a miss. And wouldn't this be just the right time for that? Since we have about... We are right about that time where we usually wrap things up. So, I think this is... Uh, yeah, they refuse to make a demand which costs you greatly. Pay the price. So, I think this is the moment where... Like, they look to each other and then the guy who recognizes you speaks up and says... I call bullshit. She was... She was just here the however long ago, what, like uh, a week ago or something. Um, she just ran through here a week ago when we were doing uh, the name of whatever they were doing in the woods. He, he wouldn't be very specific about it because it's a, kind of a secret right, but um, I caught I caught her in our in our tents trying to trying to steal gold. What she was looking for, clearly coming back for more, and doesn't learn a lesson. And. Uh, I think in terms of exactly what that means, we're going to have to find out next time. We're going to have to just remember that we, we had a miss on Compel. Um, let me mark real quick for Flint his first little learning from failure thing. And <laughs> so learn from failure track. And let's give that its first little tick I thought I, I thought we were done with these guys for good we just got to go right back into the mix <laughs> we're dealing with death so anyway uh yeah they, he, he gives us this like stony look and there's like tension as people are like considering drawing weapons and then we 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 don't know what's about that we we cut to the credits um yeah i We'll come up with something interesting before now, and then we'll find out what exactly does it mean when that when they don't buy that lie. Does this turn violent, or do they go to some other route? I don't know. We'll see. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, I, I do have an idea, and I think it would be interesting. I think one of them pulls out a uh, like a ram's horn and like like blows a horn to sound off like this echoing sort of signal throughout the mountains that clearly is warning lo other people throughout. Uh, they're not the only ones, and who knows where they all are. The, the warning has gone out, and there's probably a series of them in that kind of, like, Gondor sends uh, calls for aid sort of way. Like, we hear theirs, and then there's another one, like, in the distance, and, like, they uh, they send the message back towards Black Falls that there are unwelcome people in the neighborhood, and we will go out on that. So... Darn. Yeah, hey, you know, things have been going more or less smoothly for us this whole time, other than, you know, our harrowing encounter True. with death, but... We had a good run, a we good did. streak. We did, but it's time for a little bit more complication again, and this was certainly supposed to be a difficult thing. I hope you enjoyed this process. This has been episode 23 of Iron Sworn. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with it or kind of just tuned in towards the end, highly encourage that you check it out. It is freely available at ironswornrpg.com. I say this every time. I am not somebody who, like, I, I'm i not in any kind of deal with uh, Sean Tompkin. I don't get any profits from it or anything. I mean, it's freely available, so I just really like the game and hope that you support him. So pick up a copy and play a game of your own. You can play it entirely by yourself with no planning. This whole session was no prep. It is a lot of fun. I'd love to hear your stories if you run them. So please, go check it out. And if you really like it, you could, uh, you could buy Delve, the supplement, to get some cool things like threats and magic items. And, uh, mm -hmm. Delving into dungeons and stuff like that. A lot of really cool stuff. Blink, when are we going to see you next doing stuff on your channel? Um, oh god, I keep ripping this out. <laughs> um, I don't know when you'll see me next, but if you do happen to see that I'm streaming, you can expect uh, lullabies and tinkly music and ukulele and singing and all kinds of fun stuff and Dagon. damn Please right really. all like, those things and nimbus yeah and then i'm of course streaming over here at midnight jester 8 uh been doing primarily music stream stuff um sunday nights 5 to 9 p.m pacific time taking cello requests Though, these days, having to alter the way it works just a little bit to avoid DMCA stuff, I think 
what I'm going to do this coming Sunday uh, to try and get kind of a best of both worlds thing is I think I'm going to actually technically be streaming Twitch Sings so that anybody can request any song from there. I will cello along with it rather than sing, but that way uh, nothing is going to be any kind of copyright violation. Um, I'll be able to play along with the background, do improv, do the same sort of thing with a more limited set list, but uh, at least it won't be a worry anymore. I, you're allowed to do that. None of the, um, there's no takedown stuff. So that'll be this Sunday, 5 to 9 p.m. Pacific time, and uh, hopefully with an after party afterwards as well. Otherwise, of course, we do this game every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 3 to 5, this Iron Sworn game. And I, it has been my vow this week to get back into doing more just midweek stuff. Uh, so I plan on being back tomorrow, uh, probably around like 2, to do some kind of gaming during the week. I'm not sure what yet. I may be doing some more cooking simulator because that was fun, or I may do something entirely different. I'm going to figure that out between now and then, but I'm going to try and start doing some more just midweek stuff, just enjoying playing some more games. Um, or whatever, so I hope to see you around then. I'm also hoping to see you just over on the Discord. Uh, there's a link to it down below. Definitely been hanging out, playing games with each other, things that you don't even have to own anything, just browser-related stuff, uh, or doing karaoke together, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, it's been a good hangout, so hope to see you around. And otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed, and we'll see us around next Tuesday for episode 24. And if you really liked what you saw, uh... The coolest thing you could do is help spread the word and get get more people watching. Entirely free, but uh, so always help us out around here to get more more input and voices suggesting things. Leads to more fun. But until then, I will see you all around, so have a fantastic afternoon, everybody. Bye!